That's 21-year-old Lance Corporal Tim Donnelly, U.S. Marine Corps, a double amputee singing with the legendary Roger Waters, founder of Pink Floyd, and a band of wounded warriors at the Stand Up For Heroes event in New York City. This week marks the 10-year anniversary of the invasion of Iraq, a conflict that left 4,488 Americans dead and more than 32,000 wounded. We asked our own Bob Woodruff, who was there during the ground invasion and who would be among the wounded, to take a personal look at the decade of war in our Sunday Spotlight. It is hard to imagine it was 10 years ago. What a decade it has been for the U.S. military and a personal journey for me. My team was embedded with the Marines when the war began. All of us were ordered to wear chemical suits as protection against weapons of mass destruction, which we later learned did not exist. At night, the U.S. military has an advantage over every other army in the world. Many of us witnessed tragedy or lost friends. How's it going, Bob? Yeah. Jesus Del Solar was a Marine sniper in the unit I was embedded with. Hopefully we'll get this done and come home soon. The 20-year-old was killed just days into the invasion, stepping on an artillery shell. My war reporting in Iraq ended suddenly, less than three years after it began, struck by an IED, unconscious for 36 days. So I joined together with the hundreds of thousands of service members who survived but remain wounded. The war would continue without us, getting far worse than anyone ever imagined. Listening to the soldiers tell you that, hey, tell your brother that I love you, watching his eyes roll back in his head, that he's real close to dying. When President Obama took office in 2008, he vowed to bring all the troops home. Three years later, he did. <laughs> My colleague Martha Raditz, who made more than 20 trips during the height of the violence in Iraq, was with the army on a dusty base in southern Iraq as they made their final preparations to leave the long war behind. This is the last daylight these soldiers will see in Iraq. Crossing through the border, Reflection turned to joy. Oh, we made it! Woo! Woo! I love you guys and be home in like a week. Woo! Can't wait. Back home, the healing began for those who survived and for the families of those who did not. This week, Martha sat down with retired General Peter Corelli, who served two tours in Iraq and wrote more than 500 letters of condolence. He has his own kind of scars. And what would you think when you were writing those letters? I don't go here. You're tearing me apart. You really are. <sighs> Ten years is a good is a good place to remember this stuff. Yeah, but that's really tough. So you have to ask the question, and I know it's the simple cliche question is everybody says, was it worth it? Well, I've got to believe it's worth it. Bob's experience in Iraq and his serious injuries compelled him and his family to form a foundation to help wounded veterans, especially those with traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress. Bob joins us now. Welcome, Bob. It's great Martha, to have you great here. Great to be here with you. Since the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, there have been at least 126,000 mm. cases of, post, of, of traumatic brain injury and 70,000 PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Is the country ready for it? What can we do with all these veterans coming home? Well, first of all, are we, are we ready? I think certainly a lot better than we were 10 years ago when this war began. We never predicted these kinds of numbers and how long it lasted. We didn't know the kinds of injuries and how to deal with them, like the ones from the IED, the improvised explosive devices. The lives have been saved, but those that, have, that come back have, in many ways, invisible injuries, as you mentioned, with PTSD and TBI, traumatic brain injury. So that's changing now as we get a lot closer, but there's a big number, and as you said, they're going to be increasing. We have both spent so much time with, with these wounded veterans. What do they want? How do they want to be treated by America? How do they want to be integrated? Integrated is probably the right word. You know, they don't want to be called heroes a lot. They really want to be treated just the others in the neighborhood. So if people want to help them, do it in your community. Try to become friends with them. You know, there's a big Chinese wall, as I say, between the 99% of us who are civilians and that 1% 
in these two wars that have served. We've got to bring those in that kind of integration, to bring them together as friends, because that is the one that is really the best way for, uh, for them on their recovery. Well, I've got to say, Bob, your recovery still makes me tear up every <laughs> time I see you, and you have done remarkable work with these veterans. Thanks very much, Bob. Bob's organization is called the Bob Woodruff Foundation. You can find it at remind.org. And now we honor our fellow Americans who serve and sacrifice. This week, the Pentagon released the names of nine service members killed in Afghanistan. That's all for us today. Thanks for sharing part of your Sunday with us. Check out World News with David Muir tonight. George is back next week, and we hope you will be too.